Welcome to Talking Giants Player Profiles and Projections. And today we have outside linebacker Edge Afedi Odenabo, six foot three, two hundred fifty eight year, uh, two hundred fifty eight pounds, twenty seven years old. I almost did the age again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we can't restart like I'm at home. Nope. Uh, the Giants signed him on a one year, two point five million dollar contract. Thirty five tackles, three and a half sacks, three tackles for a loss last year. The year before that, he had twenty three tackles, seven sacks. And seven tackles for a loss. In fact, his first sack was on Daniel Jones. Wow. Justin, right now, I don't think either of us view him as, like, the top two as the edge guys. But he's the top sack getter in the edge group, like, for career-wise. Yeah. You know, like, he's got, t- like, ten and a half over the last two years. If any of our other guys had that, we would be talking about them, like, put them in the role right now. But I think a Fetty kind of switching from a hand in the ground to a stand-up edge guy, it's kind of a little bit of wait and see with him. Just getting this out of the way. It's hot in here, and I'm sweating. All right, sweaty it's pits. Not, it, it's compared to Florida, it's fine. Well, I, I don't live in Florida. I am a privileged New Jerseyan who loves it being 65 degrees and indoors and all day. And trash on the side of the road. And trash on the side of the road. There's a lot of trash on the side of the road in New Jersey. Yeah, Afedi o- o- Odenabo. Um, uh, can I call him Obi Wan Kenobi? Because Go for it. Because uh, I, I, we got a YouTube comment that says, uh, I cringe whenever Justin says uh, Odenabo's Fetty's last name. So I'm just going to call him Obi-Wan Kenobi like I did when, when we signed him. Yeah, he has, the most cr- he has the most production out of all of our edge rushers, which is, I mean, nothing, uh, nothing to or celebrate, really. But he does have the most production in the edge room. Um, we signed him thinking he would be an interior defensive lineman. I'm still going to put my head at night still thinking to myself that if Eddie's a def- an interior defensive lineman, but I think because of just the way the roster's broken down with the depth that we have at interior defensive line, and then also the the need for edge pieces in general, even though there's a lot of names in the room, there's still a, a need for production, and that is certainly the Giants did not get any production out of the edge room um, last year, and I think really this signing, I think this is further evidence that the Giants, at least right now, they did go after um, what's his face Leonard Floyd from Los Angeles, so they did go after him. But I think this is still further evidence of Safedi signing that the Giants, the approach to their edge rusher room, is penny rich dollar poor. I think he's very good value. Um, definitely should be better production wise as Kyler Fackrell, but obviously can't drop back into coverage, so he may not be as complete of a player as Kyler Fackrell. Six games with at least three pressures in 2020, 65 percent of the snaps. And five pressures with at least two pressures in 2019, 34% of the snaps. That's going to be the key for this edge rusher room. You know, we saw Lorenzo Carter last year. He took that step up when he got 90% of the snaps. You're not always going to be getting 90% of the snaps. How can you get into the game and how can you be productive even when you're not getting 80% of the snaps where you really can get your sea legs under you and get to know your opponent? And Fetty seems like he can get that production and he can be valuable even if he's not out there for, you know, being a full-time starter. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned it. I thought he was going to play D-line. I thought he was going to play that B.J. Hill, like, defensive tackle slash D-lineman who lines up over the tackle, but he's usually got someone outside of him. But they're listing him as an outside linebacker. They have him working with the outside linebacker. So that's what he's doing. And that really does change what I initially thought of of a Fetty because he's moving to, like, that true end position. And part of the reasons I thought he would play as one, he's always had his hand in the dirt. He's had some stand-up reps, but he's mostly been a hand-in-the-dirt pass rusher. Um, also, he doesn't drop back in the coverage. Like, he had two coverage reps the entire year for 2020. But it does change, like, for some positives, too. Like, is, like pass rushing, is he going to bend the edge um, with his speed? No. But, he like, he, he's pass rushed off the edge for his career and, and gotten production. You know, he's got a good bull rush. And then pass rushing, if you move him inside, like, he is the type of guy who he's got a different set of pass rush moves. You know, he's not just like, you know, he's got his one bull and pull or the hand swipe. He does multiple things. And I think like that versus when you do line up on the interior, which he can do, has done. I mean, hell, his first sack of his career was that like nose tackle versus the Giants. Like that's where he can embarrass offensive linemen where I don't think he's ever going to embarrass a tackle. He'll get sacks versus a tackle, but I don't think he's ever going to get like those embarrassing like just makes him look silly where in the inside he can do that let's bring back the nascar you ready for this lorenzo thunder williams fetty and aziz Aziz. i think you will see that i actually i think that'll be like a lot of third down reps if they're wanting to play you know man press you know they're not trying to play zone and disguise things like hey we're gonna blitz it's like let's get our four best pass rushers out there or even um 
uh, B.J. Hill on the inside or B.J. Hill on the end. Leonard Williams, Dexter Lawrence on the inside. And then Effetti, like week three against Matt Ryan. And I'm talking particularly against non-mobile quarterbacks. Put the big guys out there, like the three defensive lineman formations with Effetti out there. Like utilize those three defensive lineman formations. I know we're excited about Aziz. I know we're excited about Lorenzo Carter, you know, O'Shane Zimenez. Hopefully we can get healthy, make the team, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm also excited for the potential of, you know, if Effetti is going to be recognized as an edge rusher, an outside linebacker, three defensive lineman formations with him on the end, I think that could be valuable. I know he's not really the best run defender, but strength-wise, I mean, that is a very strong defensive line in front four when you have him on like the outside Leonard Williams on the other outside and then guys like BJ Hill Danny Shelton Dexter Lawrence all maybe on the inside I mean that is a very strong front four and you know he's a situational pass rusher but like the maybe not such a great run defender a lot of my views on that were because he was lining up on the inside and he couldn't handle like the guard tackle double teams and and pass all like he would get moved off the spot and that still happens when he's lined up on the end versus tight ends and stuff or, or you know tackles but now that you have him on the outside, lining up probably against tight ends, that makes it to where like his, where I would say poor run defense at times like go away, where he's not facing you know he's not facing a guard, you know he's a, he's facing a guy like Cam Fleming who who's not going to be mauling you off the ball, where you know most guards can maul maul you off the ball, so that helps. Um, but what I do wonder is the fact that he just doesn't drop in the coverage. Like, it's not that I don't think he could put, not pass rush off the edge, play run defense off the edge. He just flat out doesn't drop back in the coverage. I mean, and, and they took – they didn't give Marcus Golden real snaps, and he was the flat out best, best pass rusher on the team last year. And he didn't get reps because he didn't really – like, you know, anybody can drop in the coverage, but he wasn't, like, good and well-versed in it. Fetty has, like, no experience in that, and I don't know how much they're going to coach him up in camp to where, you know, they can feel comfortable with him out there, where Aziz and Lorenzo are, like, those perfect fits that are the do-it-all type of edge players. So can he get, like, can he, Marcus Golden was flirting around the 30% snap mark before he was traded, I mean, and largely coming in on passing downs. Would you be shocked to see that he ends the, and now usually these things work themselves out with injuries, and I have a feeling that the Giants' edge room is going to work itself out with some injuries and guys that are available, guys that are not available, so it usually works itself out. But by the time we end the year, if everything's perfect, he finishes the year with 35%, 40% of the snaps. I'm not surprised, not surprised at all. I, I think that's right where he's around is, is, is 35, 40. But I think sometimes... With Fetty coming in the camp and the free agency signing, I think a lot of people thought he might be even be the number one guy with Lorenzo coming back from injury. And if not that, the second guy. But it really does seem like they're going to push Aziz to play quickly. Um, and I, I think that hurts Odin, Odineb, uh, Afedi more than anybody, more than yeah. it does Lorenzo. So I think he's going to get plenty of reps. You know, I, I don't. It's not that I think he's going to be he's going to be phased out of the defense, but I, I don't see him playing more than fifty percent. I see him around that 40 percent. Which is a good amount. It's not like he's not playing. Like that's a that's yep. a key contributor to the defense playing yep. those reps. Absolutely. Anything else on a Fetty? No, no. I, I, it, this this Giants edge room is is a pretty complex and fun conversation to have during the summer. I mean, if it's been one that we've been having since the spring, kind of going back and forth on what they may do, what it may look like. Who's going to get the reps uh, analyze, you know, even going down to analyzing, you know, shout out, you know, this is research Rick's uh, MO, you know, you have to kind of look at how Patrick Graham and how the giants want to go about with formations, with defensive formations, which usually isn't something that you look at on the front end. You're usually looking on the back end, like how many defensive backs are on the field. That's always something that, you know, the broadcast, they always like to show, but you know, not really looking at, what's going on at the front four and if there's linebackers or if there's defense alignment. And when you include a, a guy like uh, Odenabo, uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi, when you include a guy like him, because he doesn't really have a clear role, previously an interior defense alignment, now going to edge, it's a conversation where it's like, oh, what are they going to do when you have to analyze in a very particular kind of way, especially if you want to try and predict what's going to happen, because that's what we kind of do in these PPPs. We project. Preseason football, does a Fetty drop back in the coverage on 10% or 10 percent or more of his reps or less than 10%. I'm going to go, this is wild. He's got to get out there preseason, first of all. So just hold, hold. percent of his reps, not the total reps. You got to try it. Let's go over. You got to try it. Let's I try think it out. So, yeah, preseason. So if he, even if he gets 10 reps, he put two in coverage. That's more than he did all season. Boom. So. 
All right, we appreciate you guys. We'll see you on the next one. Until then, let's go big blue.